nice crowd. Okay, so, um, oh, we've got some more people coming in. I'm, Sarah's already sort of like told me that uh, the best way to do this is to provide a password, but I haven't actually implemented that yet, but I will be doing that soon. Um, welcome everyone to the Content Mastery Call, as it is now officially called. Um, and today we're going to be doing a special sales funnel mastery session. Um, the point of this is um, in the long run, I'm pretty much going to be breaking down the purpose of content at like each step of the way in, in a much bigger session. Um, so next week, I'm going to be talking about adverts and how to break that down. Um, so I thought to, to start these um, this series, I'm going to uh, discuss um, the sales funnel overall. Um, so it's going to be a little bit, there's going to be mechanics in this call. I'm going to talk about... Um, you know, uh, the, the purpose, like like what actually happens in the sales funnel on a sort of like technical and, um, you know, as a as an overall picture. But um, I'm then going to also be talking about um, how to achieve your objective with content, because I think like content is like the, the it's like so if we've got the, the funnel, which will be like um, the skeleton. The content is the soul is the fleshy bit, maybe the, those two different things, but it's the it's the the meat within on top of the skeleton um, so I will be talking about the skeleton itself and just you know what it does as a, as a mechanical sort of engine type thing but then also I'll be applying showing you how to apply like a strategy uh, in terms of messaging on top of that um, the agenda of a sales funnel in the most basic terms is to bring in a big number of people in um, one side and then convert them into well you know qualify them down into a small number of people which is your sales it's your leads it's your um it's your it's your customers essentially so um everyone good with that i want to i'm gonna try am i talking too fast and i'm a fast talker so i'm probably going to speed up and be like by the end of the call but um if i get too fast just give me a little prod and um i'll try and slow down for you um okay so yeah i know that a lot of you already know what a sales funnel is i know a lot of you like understand the concept but i am going to go kind of dig up old soil just to sort of um refresh ourselves on the sales funnel because i remember when i first started in marketing <laughs> um so it would have been 2016 i think maybe 2017 um and which is great because it's not it's not been long that i've been doing this if you think about it in terms of that i just remember i was like Aside from AdWords itself and YouTube as an advertising platform and all the tech involved in that, I just didn't have a clue why I was doing all this stuff. I was like, I'll do it because that's what I've got to do. But it made no sense to me. Um, and I'm sure it was explained to me. Uh, but as I've developed, I've been like being able to connect the dots and be like, oh, that makes sense. And coming from a sales background in, in like just in general anyway, um, I really um, empathize with the sales funnel journey in terms of nurturing and building a relationship with a customer and then selling an expensive product as well. So I kind of like when I was able to go, oh, this is what this part of the funnel is, is achieving in terms of the relationship of the customer and why it's why it's doing that. I was able to see the insane power behind it and then create content that sort of leverages each side, like each bit. Um, and all, the reason there's so much power in it, because when I was in sales, like. I need your consent on a few items to continue. OK, you're not very helpful. Go away. This is my phone just misbehaving again. Stop it. Turn the phone off. Sorry. So um, basically, I identified the real power behind it. Come on, turn off. Thank you. I identify the real power behind it um, because unlike a sales process, obviously it's automatable and it's scalable. So I could turn it on and it'll do the work for me. And also I can put a lot of people in at one end and not very many people at the other end so that all the sales conversations I do have are really qualified. They're just quite, it, it's just so much closer to the sale. So it takes a lot of work. It, there's a lot of steps on the way. Um, but it does, it is really, really powerful. And something I'd also like to just point out at this beginning stage, just to sort of set the tone, is that 
my sales funnel, like this is the first one I built for myself. It's really rickety. Like I'm a messaging strategist and my messaging is all over the place. My sales funnel is like being held together by like hair bands. I'm not even joking. It's like, this isn't me trying to, I don't know, undermine myself. It's to kind of demonstrate like how much it doesn't, it doesn't take all that much to be better than a majority of people. Cause I've got a really good stream of clients coming in and in my head I'm like the reason it took me so long to do it this way is because I was like I haven't got the time to make it perfect I was like sod it let's see what happens and it's actually insane how powerful even the most rickety of um, sales funnels is to you so I guess that's the kind of um the, the biggest message for me um that I really want to put out is like imperfect action forwards just start doing it and think about the whole thing um, and because I feel very out of line as a messaging strategist and a content coach when I'm sort of like perfecting content or trying to like really like I, like really streamline everything when my stuff's like a bit all over the place but it's getting results so yes when I work with people I am all about like enhancing the message and getting everything congruent but I think the most important thing is just to have something in place and and do it really um, so that's why I kind of wanted to <laughs> throw my authority out the window and say, my stuff isn't amazing. Even for someone who, who teaches principles, I don't always adhere to them because it's more important to do stuff than it is to, um, I don't know, to, to perfect. Perfection causes paralysis. Okay, so uh, itchy nose, sorry about that. Um, right now I am going to, I've discovered this fantastic app. Uh, it's called Zeitboard. So let's get that there. Because I don't know if anyone has been on my calls recently where I've got the um, the Zoom uh, <laughs> the Zoom whiteboard and it's an absolute travesty. Um, I've discovered this and I absolutely love it. Um, it's just a whiteboard thing. Um, I'm going to eventually get one of those ones that I can just draw on. But for now, I'm going to use my mouse. So any words I write, they're not going to be like hugely legible, but it'll do the job. OK, so this is going to be the sales funnel skeleton. Um, and I'm just going to what I think the best way to do this is to reverse engineer it so that we understand because essentially the real thing we're trying to do right is this this is our sale this is our end package which I'm going to do um I'll do a call on at some point where it's like how do you put together your package how do you put together your content um and maybe I'll probably start with that first because it's, it is reverse engineering so I might actually I'll do that afterwards. But anyway, so this is essentially, I mean, as much as we don't want to say like this is the main goal of business, but it is. You don't have a business unless you're making money. Um, and you can choose to provide a service that actually helps people. And you can choose to provide a service that does good in the world um, or not. That's up to you. But unless you make money, you don't have a business. And I sort of say this in copywriting as well. So many people talk about the narrative and the emotive side of copywriting. And the fact of the matter is, copywriting, the success of copywriting is defined by the fact it made a sale. So promote the product, make the sale, that's successful. With a sales funnel, if you make a sale, it's a successful sales funnel. So essentially, even if the messaging is rickety, even if the, you know, the links aren't all like very efficient, even as long as it does something that makes a sale, then it is, well, you know, it's not necessarily efficient, but it's, it's effective. It does the job. So sale, here's the, here's the, um, Here's the outcome. And I know a few of you are um, SFM members and also uh, are also developing a coaching business or a service based business. So I'm going to briefly talk about the sales funnel in relationship to SFM, but as a way to demonstrate um, why I'm going to discuss this kind of sales funnel, because there's different elements to different things. Horses for courses. So at this end, let's say you're doing a high ticket coaching package. So I'm going to just say 3K. This seems to be a sort of like um, a number that a lot of coaches um, just kind of go for. It's like 3K for 90 days, something along the lines of that. Um, or let's say you're SFM, and I think it's like $200 to sign up, okay? So either way, you've got the, you've got the 3K sale or $200 sale. Okay, so what you've got to think about is how are you going to make this sale? Like what, like, right, so can you imagine just going up to someone saying, can I have 3,000 pounds or can I have 200 pounds? Like either way, they're going to be like, nah, probably not going to do that because they don't understand what it is, or um, there's not that much incentive, you know, that we've got like op things like countdowns and scarcity, but just on a basic level, you kind of just need some reference, you need some context. And so, and there are a few ways you could do this. So, oh, so there's a few ways you could do this, uh, just in uh, admitted Tom, 
to the uh, to the call, Mr. Late. I'm joking, I don't think we can even see that yet. Usually Alan. Okay, so normally, um, so this is one way of getting people into a sale by having a one-to-one -one call with them. Um, alternatively, you can have uh, a sales page or a sales letter, um, which will go, I'm just gonna put that here for now, um, which is the automated version. Um, I suppose what else could you do? Um, you can have a referral as well, right? People just refer, um, so you just literally, well, I suppose the referral leads one to one anyway, but these, these are some of the options to get people into a sale, right? They all are effective, even just like a bloody invoice, you know? Um, so the reason, so what I like to look at is like, okay, so if this is my package, right? This 3K is the sale. Am I likely to make a 3000 pound sale off a sales page? No, probably not. I'm going to try it. Um, trust me, that's going to be something I'll give a go. But um, I'm not, I don't think it's likely for me to get a £3,000 sale off a sales page. Invoice, only if I've done some prepping beforehand. Referral, potentially one-to-one, -one, more likely. I have control over like what's going on. I can understand their objective, objections, their objectives, all the things, right? Um, so then I think to myself, what if I've got a £200 sale? Well, yeah, I probably could. There's, there's a definitely a stretch, right? It's a bit of a stretch getting someone to give you £200 off the sales page, but it's doable. So that's how you identify what goes on in your funnel is like how much one-on-one -on -one time or how much, how much personalizing does it need? In terms of 3K, I'm not selling a 3,000 pound course. I'm selling 3,000 pounds one-to-one coaching. And if I had a big brand or I had like millions of followers, I might be able to sell 3,000 of recorded content, um, 3,000 pounds worth of recorded content, but that's not where I'm at right now. So my sales funnel has to serve me. It has served where I'm at right now with my business. And, and honestly, for me, I only want to make three of these a month. And there are some statistics and like numbers we can work with, but I don't want to necessarily like drill into those, but they are important to remember later. Um, but that's just me, because I think after three months, I've got nine hours a month working with clients. And yeah, I'm happy with those numbers. So that's kind of what I aim for. So my best strategy, realistically, it's actually referrals. A big chunk of your business comes from referrals, but I can't control that. That's, that's something that's like, Firstly, it doesn't come straight away. There's a there's a time period with that. So it, I can't control it. It's There's a lag period, there's time. So it's just not something I can rely on for my money. So I'm going to get rid of referrals because I haven't already got a huge following because I haven't, you know, I haven't got a small product leading into the big product. I'm going to get rid of the sales page also. So this leaves me with a one-to-one -one call into my sale, right? So on the one-to-one -one call, I will sell them into package. Okay, so... Then you think like the next, uh, and it's just all logical. It's all logical because you think, well, how do I get people into a one-to-one -one call? Like, what's the way to do that? Okay, so it's a link, it's a calendar booking, but how do I get people into the calendar booking? Okay, so there's a few options I think here. So you've got social media, okay? So it's kind of just getting like people, just where, where do I get people from? And they're relevant. You want them to be relevant because this is your time right here. Okay, so this is not scalable. This is not automatable. This is your time at this stage. Obviously, you can outsource this to like, you know, um, people who do prospecting calls, etc. But this is not um, this is your your one on one time. So the most important thing at this stage is that you get people who are relevant. So the way to get people who are relevant, you get social media. So, for instance, I'm going to say, uh, well, I'm just going to say social media because that applies to Instagram. It applies to um, email, not email. Sorry, it applies to Facebook. It applies to the, all the things. Right. You've got social media. Um, another alternative is, again, um, you've got email and you've also got referrals again. So it's just a case of going, OK, well, for the outcome that I want to achieve here, what is going to make this best? OK, so I can't control the referrals again. Referrals are probably the best one because they've been primed. They've got, you know, there's social proof. It's, it's a really powerful opportunity, but I can't control them at this stage. Um, you know, there's obviously affiliates and blah, blah, but at this stage, in the most simple terms, I've got social media to get people onto my one-to-ones and I've got emails to get people onto my one-to-ones. There's benefits and setbacks of both. Email, we've got to think about the actual process. It's much, it's so much like a linear, like, book, like it's a linear thing, right? Um, and there's sequential options. It's like, it's, you're, you're really controlling the messaging that goes in, right? It's really controlled. And so you can really determine where they are 
where they are in their journey by the time they book the one-to-one -one with you. Whereas social media is a lot more like sporadic, it's a bit more like all over the place. So you can't really determine which person's gonna call, like book the one-to-one -one with you where you can here because you've kind of developed them, you've developed um, what they're doing, their value. So I personally think, now I'm not gonna take social media out of the equation, but I think email is much more powerful in terms of getting one-to-ones because you have a lot more control. You can also, there's a, it's easier to qualify someone for this one-to-one -one time. And that's the agenda of this step, right? This is my one-on-one -on -one time. This is, this is like, this takes time out of my life and I don't get paid for it. So if I'm talking to someone here, I really want them to be qualified. Um, or, you know, at, at worst case scenario is um, relevant for a future sale or going to refer the, their friend. OK, so whatever happens, this is this is this is to be um, what's the word justified. So I don't I genuinely do not mind having one to one calls with people that are not appropriate for me or that aren't able to go further with me because um, I, I'm really I secure in my service, I get, I get enough clients and I just think like, you know, it's going to come back and I do get a lot of referrals um, because people get free value here. But the fact of the matter is it is my free time. So I want people to come here who are like the relevant for the service, right? So that's why I think email is a really good way to do that because it helps um, develop, know, they can know, like, and trust you, okay? But social media shouldn't be done away with completely because unlike email how do you get people into an email you get an opt-in box right so this is kind of one of like an actual transaction this opt-in box they have to give you something to get for you to get the email right so um it's it's a bit of a, a barrier to entry here an, an opt-in box is another way for is another way to say barrier to entry. People have to give you their details in order to access your emails. So this is a bit more, um, it's a bit expensive. Whereas social media is just a click, right? Join, it's a join button, that's actually play. But you know what I mean? Like the barrier to entry into your social media is lower than emails, which kind of also suggests something that there's a bit more value in what you can do with a customer in their emails. So with social media, it's like you're, you can broaden, you've got broad strokes, right? So it's, I think social media is, um, is an amazing tool for getting one-to-ones and for getting money, but I use it in a slightly different way than as part of my direct funnel. Um, because also it's, it's, you can scale it faster as well than email because, you know, it's an easier barrier to entry for your customers. So I'm going to say, um, for now, social media goes, okay. This is the most, and I'm not saying this is the most effective way, um, there is, I'm just going to unmute someone who's, who's, uh, who do I hear? Who can I hear? Mute. Oh, is it Sarah? Sarah. Okay, so um, in terms of this, so it's just like, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to develop out here the bare necessities of the sales funnel, okay? Um, so then you've got the landing page, um, the opt-in, well, the opt-in box can go anywhere, right? It can go, how do you get people into your email? An, an opt-in box, it's not a landing page that gets people into your email, it's an opt-in box. That's the most basic function of it. So this could be a website. I've got landing, I've got opt-in boxes on my website. It could be a landing page. It could be, it could be anywhere. If you put, a, if you put an opt-in box anywhere, it essentially captures someone's email and stick them into your, um, your system here, which enables you to get them onto your one-to-ones. So then you've got to think, okay, so where does that go? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna for the sake of the argument, it's gonna go on my website. Um, it's going to go on a landing page and it's going to go, um, I don't know, wherever you can embed an opt-in box, basically. But you think to yourself, at this stage, it's much more about copywriting than content. Copywriting drives a click. So with what, what you can see here is this a very, this pathway, right? This is why, like, this is where congruent messaging and copywriting, it gets the click here, the click here, the click here. You know, it's, it's all very much about, it's navigating someone through this process. Um, and so with this, I'm gonna use a landing page. I think it's the, the most efficient way. Um, and the landing page, unlike a, a website, which is more like a bulletin page, a landing page is, um, 
it's like a it's it's a very it's a trans it's a it's a transaction. It's it's very much a case of I would like your email. So in exchange for your email, there's going to be some sort of transaction. So it's much more pointed than a website, which kind of offers the broad strokes of what you're offering. Whereas the landing page is going to be like, um, this is this is like for like. You want this, you get this. And then you think, okay, so how do I get people into an opt-in box? And then you've got your front-facing post. Okay. So that's your social media. This is, and so it doesn't have to be social social media. It's just your front facing post. It is the the first point of contact with a group of people. Okay, it's like it doesn't need to be an advert. It doesn't need to be a social post. It doesn't, but it just so happens that an advert works really well here, or a social post works really well here to get people into the landing page, to get people into the emails, to get people into the one to ones, to get people into your product. Okay, so um, I think majority of you guys know this, right? This, this makes sense. Um, so the next thing, and now the, I'm going to expand on this a little bit more. Just to give you um, some um, perspective on how powerful this can be in your future. Because what you'll find is um, once, you've, once you've kind of, you, this, you turn this on, you get all this going, blah, blah, blah. And you'll find by the time you're there, it's here, you're either going to have not enough people or you're going to have too many people or whatever it is. Um, or like, you know, too, so for instance, I found that I was getting, like I had too many one-to-ones calls at one point. So I had to change things around a little bit because I didn't want to, not, not necessarily that I couldn't, um, I, that, that I was making sales, but it wasn't, it wasn't fit for the fact that I didn't want that many. And I actually ended up doing a disservice to people because I just, I just didn't want to do the, the calls. So there's a, the, what you do is you run it through, you find out if there's an imbalance and you figure out the kinks. And what that means, um, you know, and I, I do appreciate, like I had a sort of lucky go of it. It means whatever my front facing post is, or like the leverage comes from back here, I could do less posts because I need less calls or I could do less email. You know, you can, you can start like working through it all. Um, so I've got, I've, I hit the, I hit my targets that I want. I'm pretty happy with that. And that's why I'm going to show you like my funnel at the moment. I'm still waiting to upgrade to Convertory, which will be a much more professional um, funnel. My funnel's really basic. I use Aweber landing pages. I've got a really, really terrible um, thank you page. Anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, so now we've got to figure out. Okay, so I think just by explaining um, this step in itself, it kind of demonstrates the purpose of content at each step of the way and so we've got to think if this is like where the majority of people come in and also like you know so a way to obviously get more people in is to grow your followers like if you've got like Instagram and you want to get so like there'll be let's say that's a lot of people but whatever um let, these are just rough numbers these don't actually necessarily relate to you know what's true but let's say you have um you get 100 people in your email list or like 100 people on your opt-in page, you might get 50, if that's quite, that's quite optimistic, 50 out of 100 clicks. Then you might get five here, and then you might get one sale here. So then you can kind of reverse engineer it. So out of the 100 people, so then you've got like, let's just say a thousand people on your social media. And this is relevant as well. I think the, I think the, um, the conversion rate from social media is actually 1%. So you are looking, that's 10% actually. So I think out of a thousand people, so you probably, out of 10,000 people, you might get 100 to 50. So these are the sort of numbers you might want to look at. Um, I actually think this might be exaggerated. I think it's actually less than this. You could probably work, you've got more, uh, there's more, uh, what's the word, friendly numbers. I don't think it's necessarily that. Anyway, so um, in terms of driving the clicks from each step of the way. So now we also know if they're there, we know that it's like, there's more people, it's a broad strokes thing, right? And so this is how I look at my content. If this is the first real bespoke one-to-one -one time with me, um, I want to almost summarize what they get, the value they get here and inject it here. But this is going to be a minimum of 30 minutes and this is three months, right? So I've got to figure out, um, so here what I tend to do is identify, because I can only talk about the surface problem. It's usually um, a messaging strategy at this point. And here we're developing the whole thing. Or here it's like, 
I try and figure out what's the most simple problem I can solve for them, their immediate problem. Um, another thing I've been talking to uh, my clients and members about recently is this idea of this um, of a pyramid. And this applies to your funnel as well. You could, if you imagine this flipped on its side, it's a funnel like that. It's all the things. Um, but interesting enough, this is where there's most people and this is where there's the least amount of people in terms of, and this works as an advert, this works as a funnel. So this is the time the timeline. So it's really interesting way, how your messaging um, goes because this is like, you could tell this is a broader, this is broader and also deeper, a broader and deeper message. And this is much more superficial and much more narrow, but you've got more people here and less people here. So it's a bit like, ah, how do you work that out? But this is the timeline. So this is when they enter. Okay, so what I wanna do is from this point here, um, is pick out like what is the most useful thing here that I can niche into here and solve a problem for them straight away. And in terms of marketing, it's usually kind of looks like this. There's money at the top of people's priority pyramid, right? In terms of us, I've got this copywriting book, actually. Funny, I wonder if I can find the page. Really, this really makes me laugh, actually, because um, I think, I don't know if it, this, this might not even make sense, but it's like um, the te there are 10 reasons why people buy. And these are make money, save money, save time, avoid effort, escape mental or physical pain, get more comfort, achieve greater cleanliness or hygiene to attain better health, get praise, feel more loved, increase their popularity or social status. So it's really interesting that one of the reasons people buy is to achieve more cleanliness. It makes sense, but, you know, along um, amongst make money, save money, <coughs> you know, all the things. And so um, when we when we actually get into the products that we're selling you can't you know at 3k you've got to add so much more value and this is like much more depth this is much more meaning this is actually really helping change things it's it's changing their mindset it's really shifting their perspective but and they know they need that right this person is like you know once I have lots of money this is the story they tell themselves once I have lots of money I am going to feel all this fulfillment okay I'm going to have it all right so they but what they don't realize is it's actually it's actually the other way around um once they have the fulfillment they'll have the money and so usually the 3k package um will help them um in almost deal with both of them at the same time it'll help them make the money and it'll help them um experience the fulfillment but you have to get them in into this cycle in order to sell them that whereas a lot of people which i find is probably one of the biggest issues because we know how much deeper and more meaningful mindset is or um, emotional blockages is to your financial freedom, we try and sell them on this. But they believe, and that's what's the most important thing, especially when you're writing your content, is in their belief, they know what their problem is. It's money in this, in this example. And so once they get the money, they can do all the work themselves. So unfortunately, you have to sell them what they want to give them what they need. And that's the best service you can offer them. Um, and so here is like almost like a cheap package as well anyway, because it's gonna be like an immediate fix. How to get more leads into your sales funnel, for instance. Okay, well, you can write um, a social post that like, here's an advert that I could put at the beginning. It's like, um, let's just say here, how to get more leads. In, and if I'm just applying to this, how to get, they know this, how to get more leads into your sales funnel so that you make more sales at this end, right? That's a problem I can set up for people. And I can say, okay, so what, well, the, the problem I'm going to tackle in terms of this section is I'm going to say, and there will be an issue always, there always is, and there's room to grow. At this point, this is the social media post. So I'm going to just say, um, I'm going to say Instagram. I'm actually starting to learn Instagram now. Let's say, you want to, from Instagram, you get people onto a landing page, into your emails, into your one-to-ones, whatever. I'll say, okay, so um, what you need to do is you need to write an Instagram post and that's 2000 characters. Um, you want three CTAs and you need to refine your messaging strategy to solve one problem. And then you deliver the solution. Ah, see, right with my mouth. You deliver the solution in terms of, in, in terms of a lead magnet, right? So the lead magnet is an exchange for their email address. And so this, I would, I would literally, and so <laughs> it's kind of like a bit postmodern. I'm teaching you um, what I say in order to give you an example of how to do this sort of thing. So um, this, yeah, this is the actual content you would want to create as well. 
but like that the problem the problem I'm solving here is much more about developing a whole long-term strategy it's like this problem here I'm developing I'm saying we're going to develop your link your Instagram post your landing page your emails your one-to-one calls your your even your signature offer um and through time I'm going to you're going to be able to do it all yourself so if that's my package at the beginning I'm not going to say that because no one actually really wants the long-term solution. They think they've got the long-term solution. They think they know what it is. All they think their problem is, is that they haven't got Instagram posts that convert their leads into um, sales, right? That would be their one superficial problem at the beginning of this pyramid. They'd, they want leads from their Instagram posts. So that's how I would write content for that piece, that bit there. How to get leads from your Instagram posts, right? Um, I can't actually write this all out in hand, but notice I'm really specific. I'll say Insta, I'll say leads, I'll say, um, and then the solution even, I'll say um, th- three calls to action in using 2000 characters leading to an opt-in box that offers a congruent le- um, lead magnet, okay? And I will, then off- I will then produce that, I'll create that, but that's only because I'm helping them with an, a, an immediate problem that they think is their problem. So even though we're really tempted at this, st- we wanna make this, this big sale here, we're tempted to tell them all the value we've got at this end, they just don't believe that you're gonna provide that much value. And here's another element of this sales funnel, which enables you to make this sale, is that you prove to them on each step of the way that by the time they get there, you can actually solve the main problem to them right? It's like, we always go for the superficial problems because a a lot of us, a part of us doesn't actually believe that we've got what it takes to solve the bigger issues. So we don't even consider it as an option. I remember this is just like a personal story. I remember once I went, I I had therapy and um, (laughs) I remember she was like talking for all my things. And I just, I just needed to get clear on something. I was just really stressed out about this one thing. And I was like, I like, no, once I sort this, once I sort, sort this. And she'd asked me loads of questions. She was digging and I developed a bit of like a, a relationship with her, but on the premise that she was going to help me solve this one issue I had. And then I remember one day, I remember one day she like put, she wrote everything, she wrote my life on the board. She was like, okay, so this is what you struggle with. And then this happens when this happens and this happens when this happens. Do you agree? And I was like, yes. And she's like, okay, so we're going to fix that. I was like, what? You can, and I remember saying to her, I was like, you can fix that it's like yeah I was like and I remember I was like so blown away because I was like I didn't even know that was an option but by that point I was like I am sold like because I was I didn't I didn't even know that the solution I really wanted deep down was actually it was achievable so that's kind of what you want there I'm not necessarily saying that I'm my solution is as uh, as life-altering as that but realistically if you can achieve that it's great but the fact of the matter is, like, she pulled me in on, like, I was like, okay, yeah, just like, whatever, have a better morning routine or something like that. And then she was able to dig and dig and develop a relationship to the point where it's like, okay, well, this is actually what you could do with. And by that time, I'm qualified. So the first step, what, whatever step of the funnel you're in, you've got to think of the end in mind, but kind of let go of it at the same time because you're solving an immediate problem. So each step of the way, you're solving an immediate problem. Okay, so that's the that's the post, right? And the thing with the post is that you want to you want to you don't want to say lots of different things. Okay, so here's another example. Um, this is a different call than what I normally do. Normally, my calls are de- helping you dig into your messaging strategy to give you more clarity um, as a coach or consultant, so that when you create content, you have um, you know a better idea of of what to say. Okay. Um, It's interesting. I've only got Sarah as the icon, so I don't know if anyone else is on the call, but I was like, Sarah's done one of these messaging strategy calls with me and it's just helping you get clarity on your messaging so that it's easier to create content going forwards. So now this call that I've created now, this is essentially the mm, sort of, I guess this is probably um, a lead magnet to a certain extent. I don't know. Maybe this is a scaled one-to-one potentially. I don't know how I would categorize this. But in terms of my messaging, I'm kind of solving the same problem because the problem I'm solving is clarity on how to create content. And the way I'm solving that in this call is by showing you the, the, the steps that you need to create content 
or in your sales funnel. So my message has stayed the same, but as, as my brand has developed, I found another way of saying the same thing. Like the most important thing in, in, in terms of my, um, my business messaging, I suppose, is giving you clarity on how you create content. How do I achieve that? So one of my strategies is that I have a messaging dig deep session with you. I like help you, it's the soft skills. I help pull out what bits are confusing you and I help put them, you know, into perspective. And then, you know, you get, it kind of uh, unearths what you're trying to say and then it put, lays it out in front of you. This one is going, okay, by understanding the purpose of content at each step of the way, because just because you know what your messaging is supposed to say doesn't mean you know what it's supposed to do at each step here. Again, it's to provide clarity in what you're creating. So my post here initially, and this was my Facebook post is actually more like here, the Facebook post that pull you in. But in in, for sake of simplicity, I'm going to put it here. And now I'm working on my Instagram anyway. So I'll be creating face like a Facebook books. I'll be creating posts that really, really touch on the, on clarity in creating content. And then I'll be promoting the call, which is my lead magnet. There we go. Worked out now. I'll be promoting the call so that to so solve the problem of you not having clarity, but specifically in terms of when to, when to create content and where. Now, this call is just not useful for you if you have no idea what your messaging strategy is, right? You need to have a base at the beginning to then apply something to. You need to, like, this is the skeleton, great. But unless you have the soul or you have the, the vision and the purpose or whatever, it's very difficult to create content here anyway. I can't solve all these problems. That's why, so let's say in line with my, um, my 3K package, it's kind of what I use these for is like trying to fit. I, I literally come from the perspective of trying to fit in as much information as possible to not be able to sell this. Right. So I'm trying to teach you everything that I provide in my coaching package for free in these parts in multiple ways. But because the scale here is there's lots of people it's never going to be personal to them. So the solution that this provides to the whole thing is person like is bespoke, basically. And so what happens is I solve the problem that this, this, this so this is this is here. I'm helping. I'll be helping create content each step of the way. That's one of the things I do. I help you construct an advert. I help you um, understand your messaging strategy, but it's working one to one. And there's no way there's no way I can provide this personal value in here, but I can try really hard. I can, re so here, this is my lead magnet, is this call here? Um, I'm, I'm trying really hard to give you all this value to do it yourself. And, and it's so weird. And I know everyone says like, provide value and it comes back to you. It sounds counterintuitive, but it does. <laughs> if you kind of just try, if you give away everything you've got here, you will sell more of this. So you have to really know what it is that you've got this bet so that you can create content here, then create content here. I've kind of lingered on um, this part of the funnel, which isn't um, necessarily relevant. Um, so now I'm just going to quickly break down what I'm going to do with emails um, as opposed to the one-to-one sort of like work themselves out anyway. Um, and obviously this timeline. So it, that's why it's a funnel. Lots of people in to a small amount of people here. And each step of the way you're building, you're kind of getting rid of people that are not relevant for this and, you know, all the things. OK, so now here's something that's really interesting and I think it's really important, especially for the group, the group that I've got right now. Um, so in terms of this is I actually don't like saying lead magnet because I think it looks it the wrong way around. Um, it, OK, so this Zoom call would be called a lead magnet. Right. Um, but the way we look at a lead magnet is like, is so that we can get there. It's, it's a way to get them onto our email list. But I like to think of a, as a, zoo, a lead magnet as a way to give them this value for free in a way that doesn't um, take up all my time. So that's why I do this call. As you can see, I don't know how many people I've got on this call right now. Let's say, um, oh, one, two, like 10, something like that, 10 people on the call. That means I can deliver this value to is scalable at this side of these in this side of the thing. It's scalable. Um, so I don't like saying it's a lead magnet because it makes it seem like the transaction works the other way around. You're like getting something from them. It should be you trying to give 
your free value out to a broader audience, which enables them to narrow down into this way here. Um, now, one thing I will say is a good agenda for the emails um, is to, I hope this is um, making sense. I think it's might have veered a little bit. From here, what I like to do is I like to also, so the point of the emails is to, not just to get them on the one-to-ones, right? It's also to get them onto the lead magnet. So they, they buy into the lead magnet here, why ever they signed up, and then the emails redirect them, the main purpose, if that's what you're selling, the main purpose of the emails to start with, if we're, especially if we're aiming for the outcome to be the sale and the one-to-one -one calls, is almost selling the one-to-one -one calls, the emails, the main priority would be to provide the, the lead magnet, right? Because if at this stage here, I just provided the Zoom link, right? The reason the emails are here is so that because this, we already established earlier, if 100 people come into this page, like only 50 of them will go into the emails. And out of those 50, like you can see in this call, maybe 10 will go on the Zoom link. So that's like 90% of people, actually it is 90%, I think it's just 90, it is 90 people, 90% out of all these people that you're losing out on. And the, unfortunately at the beginning stage of this funnel where it's social media, the conversion rate from social media is lower here. I think it's like, I don't know, let's say 2% is lower than your conversion rate from to emails, which is more like 30%, right? So there's power in the email, but there's power in this. That's why I put them in this way of the funnel because more people come in here, which makes sense because there's a lower percent. It's easier to get people in LinkedIn because it's just one button or LinkedIn, sorry, in social media. It's just one button to get them in. So you can grow it really quickly, which is okay, if only one person goes on 1% or 2% goes onto the landing page because you've got, you're able to scale this end easier than you're able to scale this end. So that's why, and this has more control. So that's why I do it this way because you can get more people in it via social media and a click rather than the, the email way around. But um, what you also want to keep in mind, and this is how you develop your funnel. This is a very basic funnel is you then have, um, let's take out this so it doesn't look so confusing, right? By the stage you've got people in the email list, we've lost, I think we said like, let's say we've got all right, 30 people in here from the 100 that were here, right? What you wanna do is you wanna have, um, uh, blah, 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 a Facebook, a social, like a, almost like a catch-all, right? This is why I have a Facebook group. So I catch people that fall out, that don't click in here. So if I've only got 10 people that actually attend this Zoom call and there's 100 people there and this is 30 made it here, we've got 20 people, well, 20 people in, could go into the Facebook group and a 1%, you know, after once I've eventually got 200, 1% will go into there, right? So it's just about increasing your leverage at each stage. So then if I think to myself at this stage, if I want to have a Facebook group to catch all the sort of, the slippage from here one of the agendas for my email is to not only get people into the zoom call but also to get people into the facebook group right because you've already done all the hard work to get them like to get all these people into this bit so you can try and get them into the facebook group as well which is actually easier than getting them onto the zoom call it's a lower barrier to entry so you'll get more people in the Zoom call, in the Facebook group than you will in the, in the Zoom call because there's a, there's a higher barrier to entry. So then you've got something, you've just got something more to leverage. Um, and then these both enable you to get one-to-ones. So that's kind of, it's, the Facebook group works as a catch-all. So then it's about, so that's how I create an email sequence with a priority in mind. The priority is to get people on the Zoom call, which will then I'll have, an, I'll have um, let's just say the next one will be like, book your one-to-one -one with me. And you will in 15 minutes have an opportunity to book a one-to-one -one with me if you'd like to have a strategy session with me, um, really revealing the curtain. It makes me feel very vulnerable. Um, but so this is the priority of my emails and just, just, I know this is so much information. There should only be one action per piece of content. So here, if I put out a post, 
um, it's going to be the post that says learn how to create an Instagram post that converts more leads into your sales funnel. So I will only create um, my, let's say my, let's say this Zoom call off the back of that post. Okay, let's use the sales funnel master masterclass. I so say, if you're confused about what to do in your sales funnel, click this link and register for the Zoom call. The email you'll get will be in relation to the post I put out here. Um, and once, and that's almost its own mini funnel in itself, like once that's done, it's almost starting a new path. This might get, I think this is getting quite confusing, but are we all following? I'm going to just, I'm going to round this bit off and then get some questions come forward. Cause I can imagine this is like a bit, I said, I was going to make this not complicated. And I think I have made it more complicated. I think I should like narrow this, smooth it down a bit. Basically someone comes in here. Um, I, I sell them on the zoom call, which will solve their immediate problems. And then I email them the link to the zoom call. Now, less people will attend that Zoom call than, than signed up for my emails. So then I want to utilize the fact that um, I might need to build a better relationship with them. So therefore, I will offer them an opportunity to join the Facebook group, which is a second priority. So the way I segment these emails is top priority is providing them the lead magnet, which I promised them here. And then once I've done that, I've kind of completed the point of this part of the funnel I'll offer a one-to-one -one call, which I will then sell into, if you know, if it's appropriate, sell into um, a package if it's if it's right for them. But if it's not right for them, then or it's not, you know, they're not they're not there yet. Then rather than losing them as a contact, I get them into my Facebook group because the Facebook group is easier to engage. So that's about then developing a brand. So then they know me and have made made it at one point when they've they've developed further enough or they're further along the the, um, the funnel process, they're more appropriate to book a one-to-one -one with me. So it's a bit more of a long-term strategy, but I think um, my, my agenda to make this simple has been complicated. So I'm gonna take this out um, for the purposes of this. So just to summarize, um, basically in terms of creating content of each step of the way, you want to have your end in mind, which is here. So what, what are the things you want to provide? For me, I try and provide clarity um, in terms of your messaging. Oh, uh, no, I didn't mean to say that. Clarity in terms of messaging, right? That's what I help you achieve or try to help achieve in this package here. Um, and this enables you to create content with like ease, basically. So you kind of, you kind of know what you're talking about and why you're talking about, which makes you more sales. OK, but at the beginning, I'm going to talk about your problem, your immediate problem, which is the fact that your social posts, I don't know, are not making like you're struggling to make an Instagram post because you're confused about what your audience expect of you. And therefore, here's let's say here's the anatomy of a um, of an Instagram post that converts which you will need to give me your email address in order to access. And then I will give you emails that um, encourage you to book a one-to-one -one with me once you've identified the value of all this. Okay, so that's a real um, basic part of it. But as this develops, obviously, um, this is something you can, um, you can turn this into an ad. So this can get paid. So this can all be automated so you don't even need to do anything because I use social media which is organic um, and if you hire someone here you know you've got it's all automated basically so this is if no I've just made this um I feel a little bit complicated um I hope I've kind of shown you how it it works um on a mechanical level and what your content your content is trying to achieve and again it's one click one outcome per step right? You're not trying to give 90 different things because otherwise it gets convoluted. So um, that's why, interestingly enough, even though the funnel of people goes like this, your messaging goes like this, right? Much more niche here, solving an immediate problem that speaks to just money. And here is much more about like fulfillment, developing your mindset, like long-term strategies and um, enhancing your whole funnel, right? You've got the, this part here is much deeper and more meaningful. Like once you um, get there and you do much more mindset stuff, but here is super like 
niche and relevant to their immediate problems. Um, okay, so that's kind of like <laughs> the overview I might have to do. So, okay, I think in terms of um, going forwards, this needs so much more. And this is <laughs> interesting enough, you can see how a funnel develops because now I need to provide much more context on each step of the way to really hone this in, to make much more sense of it. I've tried so hard to give you all the value that I give at this stage, but it's just not possible for me to do. It might create more confusion in the long run. So now what this has done is created multiple more lead magnets for me to create because I'm trying to solve the problem of how do I fit all this information into something that's scalable. So it's, it's, it's quite important that you just take whatever's here you turn it into an immediate problem here and then it runs through this, but with an agenda only to sell into the next step. Get into the emails, get into the landing page, get onto one-to-ones, get into the sale, right? Okay, so I haven't looked at you guys for the majority of the call, but how are we feeling in terms of that? Are there any questions? I've got one. Go on, Gordon. Um, you mentioned about... Um... Uh, just uh, giving them what they want, mm -hmm. um, giving them what they want, but to then them selling them what they need. Yeah. So, and I kind of got the 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 the, the flavor of that with the, the your therapist story. But could you could you kind of expand upon that a little bit? Just because I'm I can't I'm struggling to apply yeah. that to my scenario in business technology coaching. So I'm just trying to kind of flesh out in my mind. Um, what that might look like okay I'll tell you what and is that is that something that like other people felt um was uh difficult for them or did they are there more okay well I'm gonna just go for this anyway okay um so so for instance like this is I, I just to sort of um a perfect example is that um you come onto the call because um you, you like and it might not necessarily apply to you in this way but I'm just going to break it down then and refer it back to your problem but just to sort of like give like a scope when everyone's come onto the call today they've come onto the call going okay once I understand the the concepts of creating content at each stage of the funnel and how to move things through I will have more clarity and I'll be able to create content better so I've kind of sold you what you want I said, right, this is what you want. But in order for you to, act, but realistically what you need to really develop these skills is to work one-on-one -on -one with me, let's just say, or anyone, I don't, I'm, this isn't me trying to plug, but like uh, you will not get what you actually need to enhance your messaging and to give you that clarity unless you go further, right? You can't, so I can try as my hardest to give you what you want, but I can't give you necessarily the, the this, the, what you actually need for to achieve your results let's just say you want um to have increase your um the your success rate from from one-to-one -one calls to sales conversations by 50 percent like i can i could probably say like you'll increase it but unless i apply a bespoke um sort of digging deep and like diagnosis and actually work with you i can't actually guarantee that i can't really give you what you need i can just try and help you understand the concepts of this along the way, which at this stage is like, this is what I need. Did that make more sense? Yeah, I think so, like you, so it's, it, people will come with an emotional need and we, we need to kind of tackle that, mm -hmm. knowing that actually it's a bigger, so, so um, um, a simple thing might be, somebody might say, I want to get, uh, from my technical background, somebody might say, I want to sell more stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I can say, okay, that's fine let's look at the sales funnel process as you've just kind of gone through there, knowing yeah. that that's actually not going to help them. Well, it's a start. It's a yeah. step on the journey. It's not, it's not misleading, but it's not enough. And it's then a case of saying, well, guys, now that you've, you understand the funnel process, we need to look at it. Oh my goodness. You haven't got a CRM system. You haven't got an autoresponder. So what I want to do is sell my skills in that area, but actually I don't tell them that. Although go, oh my goodness, they, they, they mentally can't join the dots. So just give them what they want just now, which is like a taster. Mm -hmm. Would, yeah, and yeah, okay. and I think one of one of the things I find really hard, and I say this with my clients, when I teach something, I have so many more lessons that are in total opposition to what I teach because depending on where someone is in their journey depends on what principle they need to adopt. 
And what I find as well is as, as my clients develop, I'm like, do you remember what I said here? It doesn't make totally irrelevant to you now. That's actually the opposite. And I liken it to when I was like in school, right? Do you remember in school in like primary school physics or whatever, they said in between, I always remember this, in between the oxygen particles is nothing. I remember, I really remember in year six, they te- them teaching me that, that in between the particles is nothing. And I remember it, the reason I remember it so well, because I remember it scrambled my brain a bit. And I was like, what? And then as I, I think I was like year 10 or 11. And then they told me, something they taught me something about what's in between the particles and I was like hang on a minute they didn't tell me this in primary school but I was like what would I as a nine-year-old have thought about this information telling me now but it wasn't relevant for me at that point but it was still really relevant for me to understand particles and oxygen particles at that stage of my development because otherwise I would never get to the point where I'm learning about the more complex details the more complex structures so what I thought, as let's just say, I'm not, I'm not really comparing my clients to nine-year-olds, but I sort of am in a way, just in terms of a journey. What I, what, what you think at that stage, in terms of like, let's just say, a, a messaging strategy. I know that you need to learn. So I, for instance, this is, this is now going to be recorded. This is going to do me so much, fa- so many favors with my clients because I'm like, okay, watch this because you need to understand this basis. And now I'm going to totally scramble your brain and and teach you more stuff that's going to help you develop but it's kind of and that's why it always goes give them like meet them where they're at because this expertise you have will contradict where they're at so your skill in in a messaging strategy is to identify what they think will help them so that you can start moving them towards what and it will help them but it's not necessarily impact as impactful as it can be. Right. Well, so that's great. Cause it's still, it's still impactful. You can't help a thousand people with a bespoke package, but you can help them, you know, in this way. So that's, that's my sort of thing. That's cool. Thank you. I guess my challenge is trying to work out what I could offer them that has some value for that initial bit to then, but that, that's, that, that gives me something to think about, but that's fine. Yeah. I need to work out what I'm at. What can I offer in the short bit? Because I know what the big the big benefit to them is. I've got to find something yeah. that, to meet them where they're at at the moment. So that's useful. Thank you. Like clockwork, you've just received an email that's offering you an opportunity to book a one-to-one strategy call with me where we could talk about just that thing, Gordon. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. That I'll, do a, I'll, do a, I'll do a quid pro quo with you. I'll help you to send emails that don't say we're starting in an hour when you're starting in half an hour. Oh, really? Oh, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll help you with, I'll and, help and you with this technology. Is- yeah. Okay. So maybe that's why people turn up late. No, it's honestly, it, yeah. So that's, that's probably, that's probably um, useful to me. This is another thing I want to, I want to say it's like my tech is really terrible and I'm just going to quickly show you my landing page. Actually my landing page isn't awful, but um, in terms of what's out there at the moment, really, really basic. I'm waiting for Convertry right now. I'm just going to show you um, just like it can be so basic to get started with all this. Um, and I think, I think, I want to summarize this all. Yeah, you can get the you can get the funnel perfect. You can get your messaging strategy perfect. You can get like it all, um, you know, all in place as it's supposed to be. But ultimately, it's what makes you stand out is if you're someone who does stuff. Like really, if if you actually just put yourself out there and do stuff consistently, that is what makes you stand out. And so this is my landing page. I mean, it's not it's not like terrible. And you like actually, interestingly enough, I changed. Um, Oh, get clear with your own creation. I think I changed this. This is the wrong page even, but still I'm using that. And my thank you page is really, really basic. It's actually quite embarrassing, but I'm going to show you. Uh, I think it's TY. Yeah, here we go. This is my landing page. I didn't really, oh, thank you page. I didn't really get to go into much detail about this, but I will do a whole call on this because my primary, my primary motivation is to get people onto a Zoom call. Once I've met that, they then go here. The worst page really is terrible actually there's three links as well this is three links <laughs> and I was like ah it doesn't matter because it does it, it, it it's functional right these are like so it's basically the purpose of this page is just to get you to join the Facebook group that is it and I will be developing this um after a time like it's not it's not my top priority but I just kind of want to show you how basic it can be and how naff it can look and how you know this does not by any look I think there's even like oh it's supposed to like there's something that's supposed to be there I don't know it's just just to sort of show you, like, even though that whole thing, it looks really complicated and we, we overcomplicate it in our heads to because we want it to be like sparkling. It just does not need to be. 
It just, you know, something really basic that does the job. Um, and even in terms of messaging, my um, <laughs> my group's called Copyright Me Caroline. I'm doing content mastery calls, okay? Just make it say something as close to as possible, but just get it done, get the work done and do it. Um, that is honestly what helps you achieve. Um, so I was actually only supposed to do 45 minutes on this because I wanted to sort of talk um, about next week's call, but I might have to do another call on that. Um, basically on next week's call, I'm going to be doing um, the anatomy of a YouTube script or a video advert script, okay? So just to give you a quick overview of um, how next week's call is gonna go, um, as part of this like sort of content mastery series, um, I want to give you the overview of the sales funnel and then also um, talk to you about, you know, the, the each each step of the way, what you're trying to achieve. And interestingly enough, there is in any piece of content, actually, I think it's a story. There is um, there's a structure. OK, so I'm kind of uh, I like to have it in like um, three parts. OK, and so I also teach this. This is like my pyramid thing. I've um, I've drilled this into Susan. Bless her. Um, so this is like, again, I think all the emotive stuff comes down here. It's really, and a lot of you guys have come from SFM and you'll see all of the adverts. They just talk about, you know, the feeling of fulfillment and it's not, fulfillment is important, but right. So let's take Dan Holloway, for instance, he knew that he was feeling a lack of fulfillment in his corporate career. He knew that he was feeling that, right. He was not happy in his corporate career, but in his mind, what he needed was an online business that could replace his income, right? Because once he replaced his income, he could go find fulfillment. That is literally what, and I know this because I, I work with Dan and we, oh, no, get down there. Um, you know, that I know that because like I work with Dan and this is, I've heard his story countless times, but I'm just sort of like reiterating that, even though we want to say like, you know, you're feeling unfulfilled and it's the, the reason we talk about unfulfillment is to leverage them on creating an income if it's SFM, right? So the reason we talk about the unfulfillment is to leverage them watching the workshops, which teach them how to make money online in a way that's automatable, right? So they can replace their income, um, quit their job and then pursue fulfillment. We don't talk about the fact that building a business around your fulfillment makes you feel happier. We just talk about your immediate problem, which is wanting to replace your income. And then you can obviously you can talk about, um, you know, with with what's going on in the world at the moment, the uncertainty, maybe you're feeling uncertain. But either way, the, the remedy to your uncertainty in terms of the workshops is financial. OK, and so you get them in on the financial and then down here is the community. It's like um, it's a business about passion. Right. It's all the things that's really like we're like, oh, actually, there's integrity in this brand. But ultimately, I want the money. Right. You don't. And and, and something I, or I think there's probably <laughs> there's probably one of my own focus calls from years ago where I'm like, just it just because you're after money doesn't mean you're a terrible person because some people could choose to be a drug dealer and make lots of money okay you've like it, it it doesn't mean like because you're building a business for money it doesn't make you a bad person or anything it's just the the format you've chosen to create security for yourself and i think it's really interesting in terms of maslow's hierarchy of needs he does it like this way right so that's kind of again the advert that you want to do but you send people in the security and you sell them on the happiness at the beginning yeah so and if, if that, in terms of that, just to break it down in the top half, in this top part of the pyramid, really simple. And in terms of a YouTube script as well, I'm just gonna quickly go through this and then we're gonna call it a day. If this is your advert, you've got, and again, remember the most amount of people come here and the least amount of people go here. So it's gonna be like that in the other way around. Um, in terms of your advert, you've got money, um, and the pro so the problem with SFM at least not and this is for my coaching business I'll be saying like you know you want to make more sales essentially and this is how you do it um, within the first in the first thirty seconds of a YouTube ad it's free so in this thirty seconds you want them to know that let's just say the workshops is your lead magnet you want them to understand what the workshops are going to provide for them and so when I think of all right the workshops are going to teach you how to make money online in a way that's efficient 
because you're able to scale your customer base and automate your sales funnel, which means that you technically generate money through automated systems, which means you create a passive income for yourself. The solution, the problem that solves is someone who has to go to work to make money, right? That's 30 seconds worth of me talking there just to introduce what the workshops teach you. And not once did I mention how building a business for your purpose makes you feel more fulfilled. I'm just talking about the real functionality of what the workshops do on a basic level and how they solve your problems on a really basic level in 30 seconds. Because if they, re if they go past here and you haven't, if you haven't mentioned the workshops, you start spending money and you waste money and your cost per lead goes up. So, I mean, that's, look at me talking about this now. I'm saying, the, I guess the, the problem is get your problem solution and product within the first 30 seconds otherwise your cost per lead goes up that's a really su superficial problem about an advert but then next you've got to learn the rest of it which is how to deepen your argument within this bulk here so that you build integrity you demonstrate your brand you give authority all the things but this part is literally just solving their immediate problem within 30 seconds so that if they decide to click there they either get a workshops or they're off and you don't and you don't spend any money so it's a win-win by by introducing the workshops within the first 30 seconds it's a win-win for you because if they click that's it you're obviously paying for that lead but if they click off you don't and then obviously you've got the five seconds here which is like they are forced to watch it so you can utilize this space here to grab their attention whilst I, I know it's funny i always think about clockwork orange where they've got like these things on there that's kind of what you've got at that stage you've got someone who's been forced to watch it so you're late you, you've got to use those five seconds to really just like get the message into their brain but again you've got five seconds to say what the, what the problem so what problem is solved from the workshops and then obviously the rest of the advert is to develop and deepen and to make it um, more wholesome. And I like to have um, three calls to action, which are here, here and here. So uh, this is this is this is the very basis of the anatomy of a video script. So this is the timeline here. And by the end, you know, they click onto into the funnel, which I showed you guys earlier. Um, now, the thing with this piece of con this this it applies to so many different things. I think it's just a universal structure. Um, so understanding this model in itself um, is probably gonna really help um, just in various various ways with creating content. Okay, so um, you've all got, uh, I, I imagine, I think um, if you're all on my email list, you have all got a link right now to um, book a one-to-one -one with me. Um, if uh, Obviously, as I've shown you in this, um, there's there's potential for me to offer you my coaching services, although not always, because I don't always find that everyone um, who books one to one is a fit. Um, so the one to one is literally me helping you get um, deeper into where you are with your messaging right now, identifying like what it is that you could do to move forward um, practically with your business and in terms of your messaging and to give you some uh, clarity and some uh, to unfuzz you, I guess it is to just give you like some practical steps to move forward. So if you would like a half hour strategy session with me, then you've got a link in your inbox right now. Um, should be, although as Gordon has rightfully pointed out, it might turn up in half an hour. Um, but uh, yeah, so just to show if, if I can do it, you guys can all do it because I'm um, a moron when it comes to tech. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to understand a bit more about the um, anatomy of a YouTube video script, which is basically the anatomy of any script, but I'm just being niche because that's what my audience wants. Um, tune in uh, next Tuesday on the Content Mastery Call where we'll be going through that in more detail. Any final questions? I just want to say, Caroline, that was really, really helpful. And I had the, um, you know, the strategy session with you and um, going from that to, um, what you've just went through now like I, I kind of need to understand why I'm writing certain things so like that's just like piece the two of them together so um, yeah very very helpful thank you so much that's actually really great because like obviously the beginning of these calls I've been doing the hot seats so I think it just leads naturally into this like once you've understood your messaging then we go and understand the full concept of the um, 
of the sales funnel and next we're going to go a bit more granular so next week it'll be an advert but thank you Sarah for your feedback that was very nice bit of social proof because I'm going to cut this part of the call out and post it out to um, enhance my sales funnel so that was an unplanned bit of social proof so thank you very much Sarah that was very useful I think also Caroline um, seeing it drawn out if you're a, a visual thinker at all to actually be able to see it step by step makes it really clear and really easy to understand good so I found that really useful ah oh, thanks guys um I appreciate it was, I feel like I did get a bit complicated and convoluted. So I will be doing another one of these calls at some point. Um, and I'll probably say a less complicated version, but yeah, I'm glad that it was of help. Um, and again, this is my process and we're going to be refining it. Um, so hopefully it'll be even more clear next time. So thank you, Susan. One of my favoritest people in the world. I've got a Scots <laughs> and an Irish, a Scot and an Irish girl. They're my faves. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay, so um, I'm going to end it there. Uh, again, here's my extra CTA. Um, there'll be um, a link in everyone's inbox now if you'd like to book a one-to-one -one strategy session with me um, to go over your content, just to give you a bit more clarity and direction moving forwards. Um, there will be obviously opportunities to work with me ongoing if this is something you want to do. Just to let you know as well, it's not always, there is a £3,000 um, package, but that's that's just me sort of sharing this example. It's not always, that's, yeah. Anyway, um, don't feel like if you're booking me a one-to-one, -one, booking a one-to-one -to, -one to me, that is going to be the only thing we're going to talk about. It's not at all. Um, and if you would like to understand a bit more about how, um, how to structure um, a video ad, specifically YouTube, um, join the call next week, which will be the anatomy of a YouTube script, which will help you create content in all ways. I find just this is a structure that applies to everything, but we're going to be doing it specifically for YouTube next week. So thanks guys. Um, I, uh, yeah, feel free to comment and post on in my group to say how fantastic I am. Um, cause it's all, it's all good publicity basically. Um, and I hope this was helpful. I'll speak to you all soon.